Let's get weird into it. Number 10. The Great Ketchup Betrayal. Remember the early 2000s. A time of frosted tips, dial-up internet, and a culinary war crime known as Heinz EZ Squirt. This wasn't just ketchup. It was ketchup in colors that nature never intended for a tomato-based condiment. We're talking blastin' green, funky purple, and stellar blue. And if you were a kid back then, you probably begged your parents for it. But here's the weird part. A lot of people swore it tasted different. Worse, even. Despite Heinz insisting the formula was identical to their classic red ketchup, brains across the world were staging a full-blown mutiny. Why? Because your brain is incredibly lazy and relies on cognitive shortcuts. For your entire life, it has built a strong, reliable association. Red equals tomato. Sweet. Tangy. Ketchup is red. The file is closed. Case solved. Then, you squeeze a glob of Swamp Monster Green onto your fries. Your eyes see green and immediately pull up files for lime, sour apple, jalapeno, or maybe that thing you found at the back of the fridge. Your eyeballs send this panicked code green signal to your brain, while your tongue is reporting standard ketchup flavor, Captain. Your brain, caught in the middle, basically throws up its hands and has a meltdown. It can't reconcile the signals. This conflict, this cognitive dissonance, is so jarring that your brain alters your perception of the taste to try and make sense of it. It decides the ketchup must be off or weird. Because that's a more logical explanation than ketchup is now the color of a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Your brain would rather lie to your taste buds than admit its color coding system is a complete sham. Number 9. The Wine Snob Deception Imagine a room full of wine experts. They've got swirling techniques that could generate a small hurricane and noses so finely tuned they can tell you the marital status of the grape picker. You pour them a glass of exquisite, deep red wine. They sniff. They swish. They pontificate. They detect notes of cherry, dark berries, and a hint of oak. It is, they declare, a classic red. Except it isn't. It's white wine, with a few drops of tasteless red food coloring. This isn't a hypothetical prank. It's a real study that has been gleefully replicated to humiliate inophiles for years. In 2001, researchers at the University of Bordeaux took a white wine and served it to 54 wine science students. First, in its natural state, where the students described it with typical white wine words like floral and citrus. Then, the researchers dyed the exact same wine red and served it again. Suddenly, those same expert palates were describing it with red wine terms. Cherry, crushed red fruit, licorice. Not a single student noticed it was a white wine. Their eyes saw red, and their brains completely overruled their taste buds and noses. The visual cue was so powerful it literally rewrote their sensory experience. Your brain has a deeply ingrained expectation. Red liquid in a wine glass equals red wine flavor. It's not just a suggestion, it's a command. The visual information hijacks the flavor processing centers of your brain, forcing them to find flavors that match the color. It's like your eyes are a tyrannical boss who walks into the tasting room, points at a spreadsheet and screams, I don't care what you're actually tasting. You will find notes of blackberry or you're all fired. How I'd ache a sour. Number 8. The M&M Conspiracy. Go ahead, try it. Grab a bag of M&Ms, close your eyes, and have a friend hand you one. Can you tell the difference between a red one and a green one? No, you can't. Because they are all just milk chocolate coated in a sugar shell. The dyes are flavorless. Yet, a huge number of people will swear on their lives that the red ones taste different from the blue ones, or that the green ones have a hint of lime. This isn't just your imagination being quirky. It's your brain actively fabricating a reality that doesn't exist. This phenomenon is a perfect example of learned flavor association. Over time, we've been conditioned to link colors to specific flavors. Red often means cherry or strawberry. Green means lime or green apple. Orange is orange. Yellow is lemon. When you pop a green M&M into your mouth, your eyes have already sent a memo to your brain that says, incoming, green flavor. Your brain, ever the diligent but slightly dim-witted assistant, preps your taste buds for something vaguely lime-esque. When the actual flavor of just chocolate arrives, your brain gets confused. But instead of admitting it was wrong, it doubles down. It subtly alters your perception of the taste, to better align with the visual information it received first. It's a tiny subconscious gaslighting. You don't actually taste lime, but your brain nudges you and whispers, 
Hey, wasn't there something a little zesty in there? A little green tasting? Yeah, let's go with that. It's a sensory placebo effect, proving that your expectations, painted in bright candy shell colors, are sometimes more powerful than the food itself. Number seven, your plate is lying to you. You're trying to eat healthier, so you put your salad on a green plate. Smart, right? Wrong. You just tricked yourself into thinking your healthy meal is less filling. But if you serve yourself a slice of strawberry cheesecake on a white plate, your brain will perceive it as sweeter and more flavorful than the exact same slice served on a black plate. Welcome to the bizarre world of plate color psychology, where your dinnerware is actively messing with your head. Studies have shown that the color of your plate acts as a frame for your food, and that frame can drastically alter your perception of taste and portion size. For example, food served on a red plate is often consumed in smaller quantities. Researchers speculate this is because our brains associate the color red with stop, danger, or warning, creating a subtle subconscious signal to slow down and eat less. It's your nervous system's built-in traffic light for your mouth. Contrast is also huge. A dark chocolate mousse on a white plate? Your brain sees the stark contrast and perceives the flavor as more intense. That same mousse on a dark brown plate blends in and the flavor seems duller. This is called the Delbuff illusion, where the color contrast between the food and the plate changes our perception of both portion size and flavor intensity. So, if your dessert tastes a little bland, don't blame the chef. Blame the fact that you served it on a plate that's the same color. Your eyes saw a camouflaged blob and your brain just assumed it must be boring. Number six, the angriest potato chip. Picture two potato chips. One is perfectly round. The other is a jagged, spiky star shape. Now, which one do you think tastes sharper or crunchier? Overwhelmingly, people will pick the star-shaped one. This isn't a coincidence. It's a phenomenon called cross-modal correspondence. And it's your brain's weird attempt to make a synesthesia-like connection between shape and taste. This is often linked to the booba kiki effect. In that experiment, people are shown a round blobby shape and a sharp spiky shape and asked which one is named booba and which is kiki. Almost everyone, regardless of language or culture, assigns booba to the round shape and kiki to the sharp one. Our brains just naturally link smooth sounds with smooth shapes and harsh sounds with sharp shapes. This same logic extends to food. Round, smooth shapes are associated with sweetness. Think of a lollipop, a macaron, or a scoop of ice cream. Sharp, angular shapes, on the other hand, are associated with sour, bitter, or salty tastes. The kiki flavors. Food scientists and marketers are all over this. They know that changing the shape of a piece of chocolate can make consumers perceive it as creamier or more bitter, even if the recipe is identical. A round cracker seems milder than a square one. That's why so many extreme or intense flavored snacks come in jagged, triangular, or lightning bolt shapes. Your eyes see the aggressive geometry and prime your brain for an equally aggressive flavor. So before you even take a bite, your eyes have already told your tongue what to expect, all based on a shape. Number five, mood lighting for your mouth. Ever notice how fancy restaurants are always dimly lit? You might think it's just to create a romantic atmosphere so you don't notice the astronomical prices, but it's also a deliberate trick to make your food taste better. The intensity and color of the light around you can fundamentally change your perception of flavor, turning your dining room into a sensory manipulation chamber. Research has found that brighter light enhances our ability to perceive certain flavors, particularly in beverages. In one study, people rated the same wine as more intense and fruity when they drank it under bright light compared to dim light. But here's the twist. While bright light might make flavors more intense, it also makes you more aware of your surroundings and can lead to you eating faster and enjoying the experience less. Dim, warm lighting, on the other hand, does the opposite. It relaxes us, slows us down, and disinhibits us. This relaxed state makes us perceive food as more enjoyable and flavorful. The flavors aren't actually stronger. Our brains are just more receptive and less critical. Colored lighting is even weirder. If you put someone in a room bathed in blue or green light, they will have a harder time identifying basic flavors. One experiment found that when steak and fries were served under strange lighting that made the steak look blue and the fries look green, some people became physically ill. Their eyes told them the food was rotten, and their brains believed it, completely overriding the fact that their taste buds were screaming. This is a perfectly good medium-rare steak. We oh oh bull. 
It's a powerful reminder that we don't just eat with our mouths. We eat with the entire environment. Number four, the fancy box tax. You're in the grocery store, staring at two boxes of cereal. One is the familiar, brightly colored brand name box with a cartoon mascot doing something extreme. The other is the store brand, in a sad beige box that looks like it was designed by a committee that hates joy. The store brand is $2 cheaper, but you grab the name brand anyway. Why? Because you know, deep down, that it just tastes better. The joke's on you, because in many cases, they're made in the exact same factory with the exact same ingredients. The perceived difference in taste is almost entirely a creation of your eyes and the expectations they build. This is the power of packaging and branding. Your brain sees the premium, well-designed packaging and immediately assumes the product inside is of higher quality. The colors, the fonts, the imagery, it's all a carefully constructed set of visual cues that prime you for a better experience. By the time you pour that cereal into your bowl, your brain is already convinced it's going to be delicious. This isn't just about cereal. Studies have shown that people rate coffee as tasting better when it's served in a high-end looking cup, and that soda from a can with a familiar logo tastes sweeter than the same soda poured from an unmarked container. It's a form of sensory expectation. Your eyes see the expensive or trusted signals, and your brain adjusts the taste perception to match that expectation. It's a feedback loop. Good branding makes you expect good taste, which in turn makes you perceive good taste. So when you pay extra for the fancy box, you're not just paying for cardboard. You're paying for your own brain to lie to you more convincingly. Number three, the tyranny of a tidy plate. Think about the last time you saw a dish from a Michelin star restaurant. The food was probably arranged with the precision of a brain surgeon. A perfect smear of puree here, a delicately placed microgreen there, now picture the same ingredients dumped unceremoniously in a pile in the middle of the plate. Which one tastes better? If you're like most people, you'll say the neat one, and science backs you up. The visual organization of your food directly impacts its perceived flavor. In a study from Oxford University, participants were given the same salad presented in three different ways, piled in the center, neatly arranged, and arranged to look like a famous abstract painting by Wassily Kandinsky. The salad designed to look like a work of art was rated as tasting significantly better than the other two, even though all three were made from the exact same ingredients, prepared at the same time. The visual appeal literally added flavor. This happens because our brains are wired to appreciate order and artistry. When we see a plate that is beautifully and symmetrically composed, it triggers a positive response. We perceive the food as being prepared with more care, more skill, and higher quality ingredients. This positive expectation sets the stage for a better tasting experience. Your eyes see the effort and beauty and send a signal to your brain saying, this is special, pay attention. Your brain then commands your taste buds to find the flavors that justify this specialness. A messy plate, on the other hand, gets flagged as low effort or sloppy and your brain lowers its expectations accordingly, dulling your perception of the taste. It's proof that sometimes the most important ingredient is just a little bit of OCD. Number two, the thirst for transparency. Why does a glass of water seem so much more refreshing than a glass of milk on a hot day? Part of it is hydration, sure, but a huge part of it is color, or rather, the lack of it. Our brains have a deep, primal association between clearness and quenching thirst. We see a clear liquid, and we immediately think, water, clean, pure, and hydrating. This is a powerful psychological shortcut. Beverages that are clear or have a light, transparent color, like a pale lemonade or a light beer, are perceived as being more thirst-quenching and lighter than their opaque or dark-colored counterparts. A company could make two drinks with the exact same hydrating properties, but if one is clear and the other is a cloudy, milky white, people will almost universally report that the clear one felt more refreshing. It's an expectation baked into our evolutionary hardware. For millennia, clear, running water was safe, while stagnant, cloudy water was dangerous. This is why sports drinks are often sold in vibrant but still translucent colors. They want to signal flavor with the color, but maintain that thirst-quenching transparency. It's also why clear versions of sodas, like Crystal Pepsi in the 90s, were marketed on a platform of purity and refreshment. Even if the drink is just sugar water, your eyes see right through it, and your brain gets a powerful hit of that 
awe-refreshing sensation before a single drop hits your tongue. Your eyes drink first, and they have a very strong preference for clarity. Number one, the curse of blue food. Look around nature. How many naturally blue foods can you think of? There are blueberries and, well, that's about it. There are some purple potatoes and purple cabbage. But true, vibrant blue is incredibly rare in the food world. And your brain knows this. On a deep, instinctual level, your brain has a file for the color blue. And under the food subcategory, it's mostly just a picture of a skull and crossbones. Historically, the color blue in food has been a warning sign. It's the color of mold, the color of poison, the color of decay. Because of this ancient, hardwired association, blue functions as a natural appetite suppressant. When researchers have served people food that has been dyed blue, they consistently eat less and report that the food tastes less appealing. In one study, participants who were offered blue-dyed spaghetti ate dramatically less than those offered normally colored pasta. Their eyes screamed, Danger! Do not eat the poison worms! and their appetite vanished. This aversion is so strong it can be used for weight loss. Some diet plans have actually recommended putting a blue light in your refrigerator to make the food inside look less appealing. It's a bizarre form of self-sabotage where you're leveraging your own evolutionary survival instincts against your desire for a midnight snack. Your eyes see a blue-tinted slice of pizza and your ancient lizard brain takes over, convinced that you're about to eat a piece of toxic fungus. The flavor isn't just diminished. Your entire desire to even put it in your mouth is shut down by a color that your brain has spent millions of years learning to avoid. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.